Forbes India and ServiceNow present the COO Collective. Hello and welcome to ServiceNow, leading the AI revolution, a path to enterprise maturity. I'm Ridhu Bhandari. Today, AI is not just a buzzword, it's fundamentally reshaping how enterprises function, innovate and compete. According to the Enterprise AI Maturity Index 2024, most businesses have embarked on their AI transformation journeys, but only a small fraction, just about 15%, can be classified as true AI pace setters that are harnessing AI to its full potential. The divide between those leading the way and those struggling to keep up is stark. And bridging this gap is critical for organizations that want to stay competitive in an increasingly digital and automated world. Today, we are thrilled to have Nalina Atyanta, Senior Marketing Representative at ServiceNow, a company that has been at the forefront of this AI revolution. And we will be unpacking not only ServiceNow's journey along the AI maturity curve, but also the broader lessons that any enterprise, regardless of its size or industry, can take to accelerate its own AI adoption. Nalina, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Welcome to India. How is the jet lag going? The jet lag is very real. I have gotten about four hours of sleep in the last two nights, but India is exciting, so it's, it's all worth it. All right. So uh, we're talking about the AI pace setters, mm -hmm. companies that are able to harness AI to their full potential. Give us a sense then, where do you see your organization on the AI maturity curve, particularly with respect to the marketing function that you lead at this point in time? And uh, what specific steps are you taking to accelerate AI adoption? Yeah, absolutely. So just for some context on the AI maturity index, this was a report we commissioned with Oxford Economics. So we surveyed 5,000 individuals globally, and this gave us a sense of how AI is tracking on a global scale. So we want to understand what people are doing from an AI strategy perspective, how people are adopting AI, and ultimately how people are upskilling in their organizations for AI. In regard to ServiceNow, we see ourselves as the AI platform for business transformation. And we want to do that for organizations, and we also want to do that for our own organization. So we want to be able to drink our own champagne, as they say. So with our ability to drive AI transformation in our organization, we have about 85% of our organization using Gen AI on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So this is in a several different use cases. So I'm in the marketing world. Um, my team runs field marketing, which means we work really closely with the sales um, leaders of our organization. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to AI from a use case perspective when it, with sales and marketing, there's a ton of untapped potential. Some examples of how our organization has started using AI use cases um, in the sales world, it's around sales optimization. Mm -hmm. So using predictive analytics, we're able to see what leads are most valuable for sales. So our sellers aren't parsing through contacts and leads, and they're really focused on having a strategic conversation. Right. When it comes to marketing, we have a lot of ability to drive campaign analytics in a completely new way. Yeah. We can use AI to understand audiences, understand what's working, parse through large volumes of data yeah. to then understand what campaign is effective and what's going to actually move the needle forward. So those are just two examples in the way that sales and marketing are really transforming with AI and the use cases are coming up every single day. The key is you have to start somewhere. So we're trying different use cases within our organization and we're discovering new ones as we do that. So that's the beauty of AI, it's changing so yeah. fast. I think if we had this conversation in a month, my answer will probably be different. <laughs> Absolutely, it's very exciting uh, and the change is very rapid and very real. Uh, now, AI pace setters, invest heavily when it comes to not just AI tools, mm -hmm. but also talent development, data infrastructure. In your experience, what is the most critical factor that sets these AI pace setters really apart from the rest? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a really interesting question. And we've seen it's such a small group that are deemed AI pace setters. You said 15% in the beginning. That's a really small subset of a sample size of 5,000. Mm -hmm. um, and what they're doing, a lot of them have very similar approaches to how they're taking on AI. And it stems from a couple common denominators. One, they have buy-in from leadership at the top. Mm -hmm. AI transformation is not a small thing. It will fundamentally change the way we work and the way our organizations run. That means it can't be done in isolation. Mm -hmm. You need executive buy-in, you need buy-in from the top, and it needs to go all the way down to your organization. So you need to be solving these problems together. The other thing is these AI pace setters 
are always starting with data and governance. Your mm -hmm. AI is only as good as the platform it's built on, as good as the data that you have. Yeah. So that's a great place to start as well. And then finally, another common denominator is the fact that they're investing in their people. AI is one thing, but your people will always be your most valuable resource. Mm -hmm. And so the ability to train your people, upskill your employees, to actually take on the future roles that AI is gonna present is gonna be the biggest differentiator for your organization because AI is just gonna enhance the way we do work. Yeah. And so it's our responsibility as employers to make sure that our employees are ready for that change. Absolutely, and in fact, uh, you know, nearly 60% of the enterprises that were surveyed in this report cited a lack of AI talent and skills as a major barrier to mm -hmm. adopting AI and AI-led tools. So uh, where do you see organizations in your sector in particular struggling the most when it comes to AI-related skills and um, any talent development strategies, upskilling strategies that yeah. you think have proven very successful? Yeah, I mean, I think everyone struggles with change management. I think that's a common thing for many organizations. So change management starts with the organization and it starts with making sure your employees are ready for that change. ServiceNow in specific is very committed to upskilling people to drive um, the skills that we need for the careers of the future. Mm -hmm. um, and we're particularly invested in the India market. So in India itself, we've seen that there are a ton of global organizations that are shifting their talent pools to India because there is such an abundance of talent here. So we have a lot of online trainings and learnings that we have been investing in to not only empower our own employees, but actually everybody else to be ready for the jobs of the future. Mm -hmm. So we have something called ServiceNow University, which is powered by great partnerships amongst government, academics, and um, lots of other corporations who are partnering with us to ensure that we're driving skills in the right direction. And then another program that we call Rise Up. Now Rise Up is allowing us to drive education to underrepresented groups, mm -hmm. um, which means that people can start their tech careers no matter what education they had in the past, because we know that we're not gonna get to the jobs of the future by just upskilling the people we have. Mm -hmm. We need to look far and wide for people who may not be in the tech sector today, but have the appetite to change their field and see where AI can take their job for the future. Right, absolutely. Well, um, also, you know, in this report, about 40% of the companies said that they're opting for a hybrid approach, building in-house solutions where they can, but also partnering with external AI vendors where required, especially for extremely specialized needs. Yeah. Now, uh, what are some of the key considerations that an enterprise or an AI leader should be taking into account while deciding this build versus buy problem, yeah. which uh, of course is very, very personal and very uh, you know specific to the organization, the sector, et cetera. But uh, as ServiceNow, what are some of the innovations that you are creating to empower these organizations? Yeah, absolutely. Well, at ServiceNow, the thing is we wake up every single day with the end goal to be the AI platform for business transformation. So we want to be the most trusted platform for anybody who has the ability to use us. So we have quite a few innovations that have led to us um, paving the way with AI. First comes our partnerships. So you want to work with trusted um, vendors. You want to work with people who have the most trusted platform. At ServiceNow, we're super proud to partner with NVIDIA. We use NVIDIA technology and their GPUs to really help us scale AI in a way that hasn't been done before. Mm -hmm. So that allows us to bring customers time to value much more quickly. Um, so our customers can actually spin up AI projects in as little as four to six weeks. And as we know, when it comes to experimenting with AI, speed to value is the ultimate mm -hmm. currency. Um, so that partnership with NVIDIA is really special. In addition, we're partnered with Microsoft. Now, Microsoft is interesting because most of us spend our day in some Microsoft app or another. And yeah. with AI, we don't want to create new platforms and tools for people to use. We want AI to show up where our employees already are. So the Microsoft Copilot and ServiceNow Now Assist partnership allows us to bring AI and surface it into apps that our individuals are already living and breathing in every day. So it just enhances that workflow. So overall, we want to make sure that or any executive wants to make sure that the partner that they have is driving innovation fast because the AI pace of change is one that not everyone can keep up with. Yeah. So it's important to work with someone that you know is keeping up with the pace of change and creating the most trusted platform for your data. And that's something that we pride ourselves in at ServiceNow. Right. Now, AI leaders, of course, often prioritize automation 
because they want data driven decision making yeah. now. Uh, so where do you see the big opportunity then for enterprises to really, uh, like you said, achieve AI maturity with speed at scale and, uh, you know, any one immediate action that you believe that leaders should be taking to yeah. get on board with that journey? It's uh, it's start now. I think <laughs> one of the best quotes I heard, it's actually Jensen Wong, who is famously the CEO of NVIDIA. And he said, the train looks a lot faster when you're standing on the platform. So you need to get on the train and it's much more manageable when you're on that high speed train. So the thing is, AI is gonna constantly change. You need to get into a project, find a problem that's nagging at your business and try to fix it. Because by doing so and investing in that technology, you're gonna discover so much untapped potential within your organization and find new use cases where AI can fundamentally change the way your organization runs. Yeah, and all of this flows top down. It comes from the C-suite, right? Yeah. Now, in your view, how can leadership teams really drive AI transformation better? And what more can C-suite executives then do to align their AI goals and AI strategies with their business goals and enterprise strategies? Yeah, absolutely. So I think at the end of the day, you need to know the problem that you are solving. I think a lot of times executives go in with an intention. You want to improve customer experience. You want to improve employee experience. But to do that, that actually underpins a lot of different pain points the organization is probably facing today that need to be fixed. So I think the more specificity you have in the problem you're trying to solve, the better chance you'll have in actually creating measurable impact. Yeah. So find the problem, figure out what you want to fix, and then how you're going to measure it. And that's the first place to start. And then like we said earlier, Again, how are you gonna enable your teams to go on this journey with you? You cannot drive AI transformation without your entire organization on board. So it's important that you're staying, as an executive, you're staying close to the project, yeah. but you're also thinking of ways to bring your employees on that journey with you, whether that be getting them involved in the project or also thinking about training and upskilling so they can really be part of that change and transformation. Right, and uh, you know, the Enterprise AI Maturity Index uh, report also underscores that companies integrating AI into core workflows are two and a half times more likely to see measurable business impact. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, how has your organization approached this challenge of AI integration across business functions? Yeah. And uh, what are some of the results that you've seen uh, you know, after achieving this integration? Yeah. Where are you on it and what results are you seeing? Well, right now we're, you know, we're, adapting different AI projects in our organization every single day. I'd mentioned 85% of our employees are actually using Gen AI tools in their day-to-day -day work. And part of that is because we're able to surface them in the apps that we already use. We use Microsoft Office as a service now company. So therefore, with our Copilot and Now Assist integration, we're seeing immediate effect in how we're actually able to drive productivity for our workforce. I've mentioned also that sales and marketing are working more closely together and actually able to focus more on strategic and creative work versus the more mundane, repetitive tasks that we find that often come in the day-to-day -day of sales and marketing, whether that be lead flow, um, curating the right target audiences, understanding sentiment analysis. Mm -hmm. We're able to do that at speeds we never thought imaginable. Um, so the ability for AI to be in the platform is incredibly important because it underpins everything that you do in the organization and sits on top of all of your data. So we want to make sure as the end-to-end -end AI platform for business transformation, we're allowing everyone to experiment with those kind of use cases so they can see those type of results as well. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, I also want to touch upon the risks. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, cybersecurity, data privacy, these are major concerns that all AI leaders or business leaders have around the world. Yeah. Uh, what strategies do you believe enterprises should adopt to manage these risks better? Because, uh, you know, risks are also growing at the pace at which technology is yeah. growing. So uh, any strategies that they can adopt while they innovate very effectively. Yeah, and, and I think with risk, it's all about working with people that are incredibly trusted, right? You cannot trust your data with someone who is not credible. Mm -hmm. So with avoiding risk, it all comes with driving your integration of um, for in your transformation projects with platforms that are the most trusted in the industry. So it really starts with working with established and credible partners um, and making sure that you have clear data governance and guidelines before you go into these AI projects. So having that clarity is incredibly important because you don't wanna dive into any AI transformation project until you have that all lined up. So for us, we wanna make sure that as a ServiceNow platform, 
We are a trusted platform. We are thinking about how we make AI secure, credible, and well-governed um, as people drive these transformation projects. And to your point of build versus buy, the reason people often work with other platforms is because dedicated platforms are thinking about this common rate of change mm -hmm. um, and risk. different types of risk come up all the time with AI product projects. So we're constantly innovating to make sure that we are the most trusted platform that people can work with when it comes to working with AI. Right. And finally, uh, Gen AI is the much talked about new kid on the technology block. Yeah. So uh, what emerging technologies or applications are you most excited about as we look at the future? And how do you see them shaping the company's future and the future of your customers? At yeah, I mean, I think it's hard to steer away from Gen AI. There's just so much untapped potential mm -hmm. with what Gen AI can do for our organizations. I think for um, when it comes to what's coming in the future, I think there's this really exciting change with Gen AI that's going to allow us to drive inclusivity in a completely new way. And I'm really excited about that. And what I mean by that is if you think about how we like to be spoken to as consumers, you want to be spoken to with the most relevancy possible. You think here in India, right? There are thousands of dialects, there are hundreds of languages, but right now we're limited to only a handful of languages in translation to make things relevant for our consumers. So Gen AI is unlocking a whole new scale in the way we communicate with people, the way we market to people, the way we sell to people. And as consumers, it's allowing us to drive complete scale um, with translation as well. So I think it's a really exciting time. It's gonna make for an incredibly more inclusive environment. Um, I think we're only scratching the surface for the change that Gen AI is gonna have on both our personal and professional lives. Nalina, absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you so much for having me. It's been my pleasure. Well, from AI integration across business functions to managing the delicate balance between cybersecurity risks and innovation, it's clear that the role of AI in shaping the future of enterprises cannot be overstated. The future clearly belongs to those willing to embrace AI with strategic intent, agile leadership, and a keen eye on emerging trends. Thank you so much for joining us on this special conversation. Until next time, it's goodbye. Forbes India and ServiceNow present the COO Collective.